Before commencing a colostomy or ileostomy, one must consider where to site it. The right iliac fossa is normally used for an ileostomy, demonstrated here, and the left iliac fossa is used for a colostomy, demonstrated here. To begin, a circular incision is made at the site of the colostomy. This can be done freehand or by making a cruciate incision and rounding the corners. When rounding the corners, one can simply lift the tip of the triangle formed and incise between the other two points of the triangle. When this is released, the skin relaxes into a circular shape. One can then repeat this for the four triangles and a circle is formed. Next, one must dissect a disc of adipose tissue or subcutaneous fat down to the muscular abdominal wall. One must take care to do this in an even manner so that the disc is the same diameter all the way down. Typically this is done with diathermy. Once down to muscular tissue, the disc can be removed. The rectus sheath may need to be incised and once onto the muscular layer one can again either open with a cruciate incision or can use blunt dissection to get through it. The peritoneum can then be grasped between clips and incised or if one's performing a laparotomy can be opened in a direct vision. Next, take a non-crushing bowel clamp to find and pull through the bowel being used for the ileostomy. Here, an Alice forceps is used for the sake of simulation. However, this should never be used in a real-world situation. We'll commence by demonstrating a colostomy. Normally, the end of bowel being pulled through would have been sutured or stapled. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, it has been left open. Take an absorbable suture through the very skin edge of the stoma incision using the back of the forceps to protect the bowel. Then take the suture through all the layers of the colon. Take care not to crush the mucosa with your forceps. Pull the suture through and tie this securely. Finally, repeat the process on the four quadrants. Once you have secured all four corners, check for gaps in between and add further sutures as necessary. To form an ileostomy, a similar approach is taken for the dissection. A circular incision is made, and a disc of subcutaneous fat is dissected out. The muscular layer is dealt with in a similar manner, And again, an atraumatic bowel clamp should be used to deliver the ileum onto the abdominal wall. Again, for the purposes of simulation, we have used an Alice clamp, which should never be used on a patient. Once you have delivered the small bowel, inspect it to make sure it's not twisted around its mesentery and that the efferent and afferent limbs are clear. Incise the small bowel so that two-thirds of its diameter is opened.
the afferent limb will be used as a mucous fistula and this can be secured in the same way as a colostomy with a skin edge stitch being taken through all layers The efferent limb, which will form the spout, can be formed in two ways. In this technique, a clamp is used to evert the spout. Again, in the real world situation, only use an atraumatic clamp, or you may damage the mucosa. The spout is then secured by taking a skin edge stitch, driving it through the seromuscular layer at a point approximately 5 centimetres from the cut end of the small bowel. And then similar to the mucus fistula, taken through the edge of the tissue across all layers. An alternative to this technique would involve taking a suture through the points mentioned without averting a bowel first. If this is done at three separate points and snug down simultaneously, the sutures spout the stoma. Once all sutures are in place, check for gaps between them to make sure the stoma is adequately secured.